All right, g'day, g'day. Welcome back to Collectivitis Podcast, where we dissect the disease that is collectivism. My name's Pietro. This is Floyd. How you doing, Floyd? I'm good, mate. Yourself? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm not that big excited, Kev. to be honest. Eh? Oh, well, you're not big Kev then. No, not big Kev. Well, I mean, <clears throat> we had that really exciting week where where like a million things happened, and this feels like the lull. The lull yeah. before the storm, because you know, there's there's obviously this great storm looming towards the end of the year, which is the the U.S. presidential elections, and then we've got our own elections, which are also coming up. And I feel like there's you know there's lots of things sort of sizzling in the background, but um, right now it's 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 just sort of yeah, that's that quiet, that quiet period, that uh, unsettling quiet period. I don't know. Is that the impression you've had? Yeah, I mean, it's been a bit. Uh, let's just say YouTube and our Rumble have been a bit quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, you know, Dave Smith smoked Chris Cuomo and um, he hasn't smoked anyone since then. So, man, well, when he said smoked and said Chris, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave Smith smoked some Chris Cuomo, some Chris Cuomo, not some crystal meth. Um, well, I don't know. He may have done that as well. I mean, Rectonwall. He's an energe- energetic guy, so, you know. <laughs> Rectonwall did uh, Gummy Gate. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Dave Smith can do Meth Gate. Yeah. Um, maybe, anyway, maybe that's, that maybe, um, maybe that's, that's what Joe Biden's been doing. <laughs> I think Joe Biden's cocktail has to have at least a little bit of meth in it. Otherwise, I mean, there, there, there has to be some really strong stuff in there. To make him, uh, what was it, the State of the Union address where he was like remarkably coherent compared to regular mm. Joe Biden? Like that, oh, that's a big, that's a big cocktail of drugs, whatever that is. That would that would send you flying on a night out, I reckon. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> imagine imagine his downers afterwards. That that's the stuff we don't hear about. Well, that's the problem. That's why he's so like retarded at the moment. Like he's walking and stumbling and freezing and stuff because he's on a massive, massive come down from that enormous yeah. Yeah, yeah. cocktail of drugs they pump yeah. into him every every so often. He um, keeps asking for oxys, but they're just like, no, we can only give you that like once every so often, mate. Like... <laughs> yeah. He's like, just put me down. No, Joe. <laughs> Six more months. And then uh, and then Kamala can replace you when you die in office. No, Hillary um, now. Is it Hillary now? Hillary now. Well, that's that's the rule. Hillary wants back in. Yeah. <laughs> just because Hillary wants back in doesn't mean it's Hillary. I mean, Hillary's Whoa. wanted back in since she was born. Um, uh, she's yeah, she's yeah. wanted I don't, this I don't know. forever. I don't know. Don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't discount Hillary. She's got some, uh, some oh, she's killer got instincts. Friend. Yeah, she's got some killer instincts. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not discounting her. I mean, it, she she's been the nominee before. She's been close to the nominee before. Uh, I, 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 I think it's. I mean, sure, it could be her. I just, um, I'd be I'd be surprised considering how, you know, the whole point of Trump and Biden uh, is that they're, they're both so dislikable on a personal level. And Hillary and Trump were so dislikable on a personal level. Surely the Democrats are going to put someone likable up if they're if they're going to, um, you know, politically assassinate or actually assassinate Joe Biden before the election. Well, that's why I want Oprah. When I when I first heard Oprah, I was like, great, because because what's going to happen? She gets elected, then she's like, everyone gets a free car. That'd well, and it would be it would be a black woman, so that would you know fit mm-hmm. in with Biden's appointing of judges and stuff. You know, she yeah. just she's not a lesbian, but I'm sure she could be for a a few months if she needed to be, or, or put it on. Um, mm. Maybe she could have Alan as her as a running mate, and they have you know the, the two oh, talk. Mate. <laughs> to daytime that'd, show that'd, host. Could you imagine? And then, like, she has, like, a daytime show from the White House. Because that's what I always wanted Trump. I always wanted The Apprentice from the White House. <laughs> Never got it. But Oprah, you'd get a show. You could at least get a show. I mean, it's set a, danger, a dangerous precedent. You literally have to be a reality TV show um, star or mm. host to, to become president. And then... You know who's next? Wasn't it Doctor Oz ran for for yes. uh, Senate and lost to yeah. um, his name's escaping me now the the union guy that had a a, a, a stroke. Oh yeah then... yeah 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 uh, yeah that guy. We all know yeah, who anyway. that is. Yeah, he beat Doctor Oz. So Doc, there you go. It's just reality TV show stars now that are. Well, then are... you you know who was a reality TV show host? Who? Joe Rogan. 
he so was. We get well, Rogan I mean, for president. <laughs> Rogan, a Rogan, um, Rogan wouldn't want to run, but if Rogan ran, I think he'd have a decent shot at winning something. Oh, I don't yeah. know if it would be necessarily the presidency, but he he'd win a Senate race somewhere if he wanted to. I mean, it'd be way it would be way worse than the podcast that he's doing. He'd do a lot less good, but <laughs> that's true. Rogan would win some stuff. I don't know. Are there any other reality TV stars that would make good politicians? Um, None are really coming to mind. Yeah, I don't know. The, the guy who hosted Survivor, I reckon. <laughs> I don't know who his name is, but, you know. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, but he's... He's um he's, um he's British. He's British, but maybe he could run in Britain. Yeah, and Gordon Ramsay would be okay. tell everyone that they fucked up and, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you seen the state of this place? It's a, it's a disgrace. It's disgusting. That was that was an awful accent, but anyway, um, he would say that that accent was disgusting. I I reckon Gordon Ramsay would be good, but yeah, he might have an American citizenship. Surely they they've given him one after all this time. Yeah, probably. I mean, anyway, the guy from um, To Catch a Predator that'd be is it Chris Hansen from To Catch a Predator? The guy oh, no. that they they set people up to to yeah, yeah, yeah. um. And then they surprise yeah. them when they come into the room. They think they're meeting a 10-year-old boy and it's him with the... <laughs> he could go... I mean, he'd catch a lot of predators in uh, in the White House. and uh, <laughs> He'd have a field day there. He'd, he'd Today, be... I'm <laughs> going to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, he'd, yeah, he'd have to run the cameras 24-7 if he got elected uh, into something to catch all the predators in the White House and... And the Senate and Congress and all the rest of it. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. welcome to Collective Artists, where we where we give you the hard hitting news. Um, what well, what we were actually going to talk about was not was not um, the the predators in in the White House, but uh, the some Australian some local Australian politics, some good old fashioned local Australian yeah. politics. Um, I'm so biting have... my tongue. I'm... Sorry, I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> in regards to going to predators to Australian politics, but right, okay, yeah, yeah. Don't bite your tongue. Feel free to to say. Do you think there's some predators in Australian politics? I think there's some predators in all of politics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're uh, we're not even necessarily talking, you know, child sexual predators, but the the politics is predatory. Like they they are they yeah. are organizing and manipulating ways to steal money from people to do things that advantage them so you know there's definitely predators they you can't be sued for calling them predators when they are predators at least in that sense uh, and uh we'll let our audience speculate as to whether they're they're sexual predators as well um and which ones too um i could ask you which ones you think would be the most likely but let's not go there let's not go yeah there. let's let's uh... <laughs> So the the what we were going to talk about was okay. There's this uh, there's this election looming in the distance. We don't know exactly when. Likely going to be in the first half of next year uh, for for Australian you know the prime minister and and uh, the the federal parliament. And we're in this interesting period now because they're kind of testing. Both sides are kind of testing to see which issues will become the main issue over over the course of this election. Uh, we talked um, uh, last week, we talked about the fact that both sides have committed to essentially implementing a social media ban for anyone under the age of 16. Uh, I think Dutton's gone a little bit harder on it, but Albanese has said that he would also support it. So there's no real conflict there. It just looks like that thing's probably going to happen. But that that's I think it's an example of testing the waters to see, hey, is this an issue that there's going to be some conflict between the two major parties in and can we make this the central issue of the election? Because broadly, I mean, there's some issues that are going to be the central issues of this election. Regardless, we're talking energy, we're talking housing, uh, we're talking inflation. Problem being, neither side really has that much of a different opinion on these things. They can tweak different policies, but broadly, they're both they're both guilty of the reason why inflation occurred. They're both incapable of using any other method than just um, pumping, you know, pumping up the the interest rates through the RBA, which is a, a, a putting a, a band aid on on the wound. Uh, the RBA, of course, being the the nexus of the problem. Anyway, so that these are issues that you know the energy thing um, is what we're about to talk about. But broadly, they haven't had too many many points of difference thus far uh, on the energy thing and the housing. No one has an answer for so. They're testing to see what'll be the next issue and what looks like may become 
uh, a pretty significant issue is the fact that Peter Dutton has uh, proposed or he's, you know, um, he said that he will uh, implement nuclear power plants in Australia uh, if he wins the election, uh, which is huge, right? Um, Australia doesn't have nuclear power quite, you know, notoriously doesn't have nuclear power when a lot of countries of similar demographic size, wealth, population, etc., have one, two, three, five, seven, twenty nuclear power plants across their country. So it's very much uh, crippling us to not have nuclear power. And this is something the Libertarian Party has been talking about for a while. And it looks like if this takes on uh, some some traction, this could potentially become an election issue. What do you think? Uh, yeah, well, I've heard nuclear power, the rumblings about it, um, slow and steady. Um, and yeah, I think this is the Liberals, you know, really going on that next uh, that next level, kind of one-upping uh, Labor on it, uh, because, yeah, as you said, this is something that's kind of dormant in Australia. I know a lot of people have spoken about it. Uh, obviously, the Liberals have figured out that this is something that could win them votes. Um, so we'll see how it all goes, but it'll be interesting if Albanese starts talking about it as well. I, d I don't think... I think there's there's no likelihood of Albanese talking about uh, doing nuclear power. I think that I mean Labor's already kind of um, pigeonholed itself into b being against it by virtue of the fact that the Greens are obviously very much against nuclear power, yes. and they talk about things like nuclear waste. And there's a lot of I hate to use the word you know misinformation around nuclear power because it's you know so much safer and so much cleaner than the way that it is portrayed by detractors of nuclear power. And of course. You know, the reason why nuclear power is so vehemently opposed by people like the Greens, who should really be in favour of it because it's re it would replace, you know, the gas and coal that they so hate, uh, is because their alternative is renewables, which have been proven time and time again to be um, inconsistent and incapable of solely replacing uh, coal and, and gas. But there is so much money to be made in the industry in the business of selling renewables and coming across as renewably friendly and subsidies and you know government grants and this that and the other because you're seen to be ecologically friendly and and green and so the last thing they want is for nuclear to come in and to um supply so much power and and to completely remove the need for pushing these renewables so they lose their their political capital so of course that's as with everything in politics, it's not actually the the interests of the public that are being served by someone like the Greens. It's a, it's their own vested interests, and that's why they would oppose uh, nuclear. So, I mean, surprise, surprise. So, I don't think I don't think Albanese would 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 um, go in favour of it. In fact, um, Jacinta Allen uh, posted on Twitter just the other day. I, I don't know. Did you see this? The the photo um, no i i tend to i tend to just see the fight videos on um on twitter and the memes the fight videos <laughs> fight video. oh, yeah, right. you stay away from uh, you, gotta, you, you, gotta, you gotta get down into this one of these back alleys of twitter mate um <laughs> you know I, 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 I try and stay off twitter unfortunately or maybe i maybe that's not unfortunately uh, well, anyway, she posted it. She posted yeah. this like meme of um, the, the Dutton's proposed nuclear plant, and it has a. It was a picture of a nuclear power plant with like the the fish with the ten eyes in the water swimming around it. Oh, yeah. um, and like this is what Dutton's proposed plan for Australia. And uh, the, the, I think the response. Look, from what I saw, the response was pretty. Um, that most people recognize that it was a very ham fisted attempt, and you know that classic the left can't meme. Um, so. Is this is this what everyone's been referring to when they've said like when they've been talking about the Simpsons and how you can't use the Simpsons and stuff like that? Because I saw a bit of outrage. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Da that. David okay. Limbrick, you know, the Libertarian Party's MP here in Victoria, uh, he he retweeted it saying, you know, the classic the left can't meme is being shown here, um, and it's it's it does come across as so ham fisted, like sure. Most um, developed countries in the Western world have nuclear power plants, but here in Australia, it would be a joke about the Simpsons having fish having ten eyes. Like that's so stupid, um, and and uh, it's <laughs> I don't know. Make up your own mind. Who am I to tell you what you think is funny or not funny? I found it profoundly unfunny, uh, and another example of how the left can't meme. Uh, I'm go find but... it now. <laughs> 
But anyway, I think what that shows is, I mean, she's only the Victorian premier, but, you know, she's Labour left, Albanese's Labour left. They'd obviously have very close relations. If she's opposing it, I don't imagine that Labour on a federal level is going to come out and say, no, yeah, we support nuclear. Obviously, in their, in their back rooms, they're talking about the fact that they're not going to be supporting nuclear. Um, anyway, so I don't, I don't think, I think this, I think this could well be the issue that uh, that takes us to the election obviously energy is a big is a big deal uh, obviously it brings into and it kind of brings into its itself a whole lot of other issues like you know the, the renewables and the green issues and the um you know the 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 whole idea of global warming or global boiling or climate change and all the other stuff. And, and and in theory like even for the standards of the greens you know this net zero stuff nuclear would service that uh, so there's there's You're all not of this. Not allowed to talk about that. Not allowed that to talk about what? The, yeah, that disrupts the uh, the the um the narrative. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the, the whole idea of nuclear and and uh, carbon and all that type of stuff. Yeah, and when that's that's right. That's the solution they don't want to talk about is the fact that if they really want this carbon zero, net zero, or whatever it is, nuclear is the only realistic way to get it, which wouldn't put us back into you know the third world. Uh, well, not the third world, but you get, you get what I mean. Um, so yeah, well, anyway, maybe, maybe they just watched Chernobyl and they're just kind of outraged by that. Um, well, if you've watched Chernobyl, the the point of Chernobyl is that it was so impossible for a nuclear power plant to fail because there are so many safety measures and so, and this is even back then. And the only reason and Soviet it, Russia as well. So. Yes, and the only reason that it actually failed was because the Soviets didn't follow the correct design and cut corners because they were poor, because their communism doesn't work, because it was cutting corners, because it was not a private industry, it was public, and someone was saving money and earning money somehow. So the point of Chernobyl was that communism sucks and caused the meltdown because in an in an actual private industry that couldn't have happened it was physically impossible that's why they were also stunned by the fact that it could possibly have happened um and you know they're much safer nowadays than they were back then and blah 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 so uh yeah go nuclear uh, so it, essentially what i'm trying to say is good for dutton i hope that this becomes uh the election issue that gains traction i hope that people vote on this uh, because it would be good i must say with the caveat of course that um the libertarian party have been talking about this for far longer than the liberal party obviously we we're always right about everything blah 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 but the libertarian party was proposing to to lift the ban on nuclear that there currently is whereas dutton is proposing to use taxpayer funds to build the nuclear power plants himself whereas you know the libertarian model would be hey companies and entrepreneurs can come and build nuclear power plants and sell the energy from them rather than the government spending. I think it's something like 60 billion they're talking about on these things. So it's not perfect. It never would be coming from the liberals, but uh, it's, I think it'd be good. It'd be a small win if this becomes an election issue. And I actually think it, it would do the liberal party some good and they might win something. Yeah. Well, the liberals need something. Um, as you said before, it's kind of like it's the the two horse race, and they they both kind of have the same jockey, have the same horses. I don't know how that works, but it does now. Um, well, it's like trackside, then you know, bad version of trackside. Anyway, let's not get into that. Um, yeah, the liberals need something to push forward and be different um, from what it is, and I don't think they can say, "Hey, supporting Israel is a uh, a good election thing." Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I don't even think. I don't even think either of the major parties are united enough on either front to make it about a foreign aid thing with Gaza and Palestine and stuff. I mean, they broadly all supported sending aid to Ukraine, which possibly could be sending us to World War Three with with the developments there. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's that, that's right. Essentially, the Liberals have um, the greatest success of the Liberal Party in the last in the most recent times was the opposition to the Voice which was not based on them, which they, you know, they championed going against the voice to parliament and Labour championed going with the voice to parliament. So it was a resounding win for the Liberals in that sense there, the fact that the voice was so um, wholeheartedly rejected. But it, was, it wasn't it was anything positive coming out of the Liberals. It was a rejection of this thing being proposed. The Liberals themselves had no nothing tangible to show as, hey, we will give you this. And they've been kind of scrambling for 
for something to show in that sense. And this could be it. Uh, like as we talked about the social media ban thing, Albanese went with Dutton. So it's unlikely that that's not going to possibly be an, an election issue if they're both on the same side of that. They need to find the point of difference. And uh, this is an obvious one. Like this is a knockout home run. Uh, shocking that they haven't gone for it beforehand. And uh, it's finally an example of Dutton showing a little bit of balls. Um, and uh, I mean, they're going to have to do something to win over the public because if it's just a, a popularity contest between the two of them, Dutton is so much uglier than Albanese. Uh, yes, yeah, he's a he's a vampire. <laughs> they have a lot to overcome in the way that Dutton looks. Like poor bastard. I don't want to demean someone on this. it's something they can't help. But yeah, geez, he is not pleasant to look at. He yeah. looks and like Albanese is not too good either. So I mean, to say that is is like a big step. So um, yeah, th th yeah, that's right. It's it's not a it's, not, it's nothing to Albanese's credit. It's just yeah. Dutton looks like a, a baked potato. He looks like Voldemort. Like they're all right. Everything they say about him is correct. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what I was thinking about to do with this. So yeah, Liberal Party using taxpayer funds. Libertarian Party would have done it differently, but broadly, I think this is good. This is a good thing. Um, well, the other thing we were going to talk about is, uh, a, a little bit of a sidebar into more, uh, cultural issues to do with, uh, Australian politics, politics and through the Australian lens. Um, have you followed, have you watched the, the Pauline Hansen's please, please explain videos that she's been doing since, I think since the federal election in 2022. So quite a while now. Uh, I remember the please explain videos back in the early two thousands, but, uh, no, not the recent ones. <laughs> Right, so she's have you have you not seen? I'm shocked that you haven't seen it. These are great. So she started. She did these. I think she did ten episodes. She commissioned some cartoonist, some cartoonists to do like political videos where they um, use satire about all the the main politicians that everyone knows. Uh, and essentially, the, the concept is that they're all students in a classroom, and Pauline Hanson is the teacher and telling them all to stop being little brats and stop stealing money and all the rest of it. And I Very think funny. I might have um, seen. I might have seen. I might have seen one, but not. Not. It, it wasn't. It wasn't striking out. But you know, whatever. But like surprisingly funny, considering like everyone's like, "Oh, here we go, Pauline Hanson's making a cartoon. This will be shit." But it, it wasn't. It was funny, and it, they they did the ten episodes, and they were so popular that they've kept going. I think they do one every week uh, on mm -hmm. stuff that's happening in politics. They so go go for about two minutes. Uh, they haven't gained probably the traction that they deserve. I would say, considering. Mm -hmm how well made they are, but they've gotten quite popular. And I think, it, honestly, it's the best thing to come out of uh, One Nation since Malcolm Roberts being good on things yeah. most of the time. Um, and uh, but the the reason it, it got into, like, all the sort of mainstream um, news uh, in the last week because they, they satirized uh, Robert Irwin, like Steve Irwin's son, who's now... I don't know, he's like 19 or 20. Uh, he's, he's, he's an adult. He's responsible for himself. Um, and they satirized him and Bluey, like the cartoon dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they um, essentially, they're giving a tour of Queensland and showing how bad everything is. I'll show, I'll show a short video so that, so that the audience can get an idea rather than me just describing it. G'day, I'm Robert Irwin, and this is me best mate Bluey. The Queensland government's given us a disgusting amount of money to show you the state of Queensland. Check this out, we got some of the best beaches in the world, right here in the state of Queensland. Isn't that right, Blue? Oi, you dog! What are you doing on my land? Oh, g'day, man, we're just showing everybody this glorious beach. Get off, this is native title. We've got exclusive use. No white fellas. Oh, no, Bluey, racial division. But don't worry about that, because we've got some of the funnest theme parks right here in the state of Queensland. Check this out. Oh, this must be the line for Warner Brothers Movie World. No, this is a rental inspection for a one better in Rockhampton. <laughs> My mistake, Bluey. Wait till you see the Great Barrier Reef or this beautiful, pristine rainforest. All right, so you get the idea. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's not, um, it's not mocking. Uh, Robert Irwin. It's using him as a, a well-known figure, and and it's. I mean, there's potentially someone who's really stupid could misunderstand and think that that's the real Robert Irwin, and that he is supporting okay, yeah. Pauline Hanson. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, the reason it was in the news is that he 
did not like that, uh, did not like this, and he threatened to sue Pauline Hanson for defamation, which meant that now all of the media and everything is is talking about and showing this this video all over the place, and uh, it's gained a lot more traction. In fact, that that most recent episode has the most views out of any of the the episodes she's done. I think the whole time. Yeah. So. Uh, great move by Pauline Hanson. She should try to get sued for defamation more often. It, it's like it's the classic South Park uh, maneuver, right? Mm. Like if you offend someone and they kick up a stink about it, then you get more popular. So they try to offend as many yeah. people as they possibly yeah. can. Uh, great political move. I don't know. What did you think? Yeah, I mean that was that was funny. Um, I, I, have, I have a question: Is Bluey an Australian thing, or are they just use? Yeah, Bluey? Bluey's oh, Australian. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, because yeah. yeah. you know, obviously I don't watch it. I just know like children that watch it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure people will believe that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it, that, that was good. I mean, you because I think I don't know as a politically minded person, it was more pointing out the issues with Queensland and using a, a, a figure to do that rather than yeah. being like Robert Irwin, oh, look at him. Like, yeah, yeah, go- exactly. It, well, it wasn't, he wasn't the, the butt of the joke. Uh, yeah. The butt of the joke were all the, you know, shitty programs that Labor's screwed mm. up in Queensland. Mm. Um, well, look, my, my instinct was, I don't really know anything about Robert Irwin. I, I was agnostic about him prior to this. Like, okay. obviously, Steve, Steve Irwin. I, I, thought, Irwin. I always thought Bindi was the one who was going to, like, inherit the, the, the Irwin title. Yeah, and I think she was for for a long time, uh, and uh, whatever that it's he's he's become a bit more of I think the 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 front or the face yeah. of whatever the the mm-hmm. Steve Irwin's legacy yeah. has become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was agnostic; I didn't really care. I'm not that interested in him. Um, didn't feel one way. Or but now, now having seen this, um, I, I'm just what a loser. Uh, now I've decided he he's a he's a loser. Um, that's so so lame for him to. <laughs> To threaten to sue over something like this, he should be flattered that he is uh, enough of an icon to be made fun of by the pollies. Yeah. Uh, so, so now, yeah, I'm no longer agnostic. I now actively dislike Robert Owen and think he's a loser and think he's lame. And I don't really like Pauline Hanson, so uh, it's not because I'm defending her. I just think uh, take the joke, take a joke, mate. Yeah, exactly. If Pauline Hanson wants to satirize us. Uh, you have. You have our permission. Actually, oh, no. come on, do do the do the collector virus. What will you call it? Like collector shyness. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You, if we give them permission, they'll never do it because it's oh, we have permission. Yeah, yeah. Great, no one's got. No, yeah. you don't have permission. Don't you no, dare! Don't no. you dare satirize us, you know, Pauline would... Hanson. This is a warning. If you satirize us, I'm gonna get so mad. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna sue you and. All the rest of it. Please don't do I'm so it. Offended. I'm, so I'm just, offended. I'd just, I'd, I'd cry on the podcast <laughs> oh, if, yeah. if that happened. Like it'd just be so, yeah, horrible. Um. Anyway, so that's 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 the the gist of that that story. Um. I, I did, there, something I thought was interesting about it though was uh, like lots of people are rallying around Pauline Hanson for for a mm-hmm. number of reasons and around One Nation and all the rest of it, especially. Recently, I feel like they've had a little bit of a resurgence, um, possibly to do with, you know, how immigration is becoming more of a topic that we're going to have to talk about. And she's kind of managed to make that her bread and butter because, you know, over the number of however many years she's been banging on about immigration, immigration, immigration. Um, and now that it's becoming lots of people are sort of starting to feel like, hey, maybe we shouldn't be letting such an enormous amount of people in when we don't have houses for the people that are already here. She owns the topic. She owns the issue more than anyone else yeah. uh, could. But broadly, the, like uh, the the Nigel Farage of Australia. Yeah, yeah, a little bit less um, cultured, I guess, than Nigel Farage. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more shrill, well, that's, shrieking. That's, that's why it's of Australia because it's like the perfect Australian representation. <laughs> <laughs> just a just more annoying, just with a shittier, more annoying voice, um, and. But I, I think what One Nation shows, because, I mean, One Nation broadly, I don't think, especially the Pauline Hanson part of One Nation, because I, I actually do think Malcolm Roberts is good on a lot of things. Uh, and and he, he talks mm. about, like, the problems with the Reserve Bank and stuff like that, yeah. stuff that, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. lots of libertarians uh, don't even, you know, aren't even necessarily talking about as much as he is. Which is so which is, that's great. But the Pauline Hanson side of it is less, it's more like ad hoc issues, I find, with her and... Um, yeah, yeah. kind of creating outrage and she doesn't have any and I, I remember at the last um, 
federal election when they had like the Queensland, um, like the Queensland uh, people vying for Senate for that fifth position where it was like Campbell Newman for the, the Libertarian Party, it was Clive Palmer, it was her. And they had these debates and she um, went quite hard against uh, Campbell Newman about, you know, libertarianism is not a solution and we can't be removing the government. We need the government to do this, that and the other. So all this is to say that she's not really against the system of government. Oh, yeah, she sure. is broadly a cog in it. She believes she can use it to uh, make it better and to serve her needs. She's not really a small government even in the in the direction of, of libertarianism. She's a populist for uh, with ad hoc issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she is gaining a lot of traction. Uh, and I think that shows that there's a lot of appetite in Australia at the moment for just a viable alternative to the mm. to the two, you know, pieces of shit who are who are running the country into the ground and not the Greens. Because I think most people nowadays are pretty cottoned on to the fact that the Greens are not it's not voting third party if you're voting for the Greens. Yeah. It's voting for the radical wing of the Labor Party. It's, it's voting, voting for, to get for... A, a poster in your in your shop. Yeah, you yeah it's those it... posters. No, no, what what posters? Oh, they've they've been popping up posters, and it's like um, it's about I think it's about housing. Um. Anyway, go if you go to a shop and you see those posters, don't go to the shop. Any shop, <laughs> go to any shop. Just walk into any shop and look at the posters. Well, you just see them out the front. They're just, I don't know, maybe the Greens are just, just giving them out to people and saying, hey, if you support this, go do it. Anyway, that's just the update on the Greens, please. Yeah, I mean, I've lost my train of thought. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Paul <laughs> well, Hanson, it was... Great it was, insight with the post. No, yeah, was, no, so Paul people Hansen, are hungry for an alternative. Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are hungry for an alternative and they realise that the Greens is not an alternative. They're just, you know, the, mm. the uh, uh, radical wing of the Labour Party. Mm. Um, if you vote the Greens, they'll just drag the Labour Party to the left. But there is, you know, there is this desire for people can feel that something is very wrong with the way that government has been run. And they can feel this mostly through the fact that inflation is burning through everyone and the government, the whole purview of the Reserve Bank is to not create inflation and they've created it. So someone's lying, right? The, the average person, even if they don't understand the mechanics of like how it's exactly happened, but they can understand someone's lying. Someone's lied to them and they're continuing to lie because they're saying it's okay. It's not as bad as you think it is, but it hurts every time we purchase something. And so there is this great appetite for, for a, a realistic third option, for a viable third option. And God, wouldn't it be great if just they all read a bit of Rothbard and, and voted libertarian. Um, but uh I mean that's the that's the uphill battle we're fighting. <laughs> yeah, but I just yeah. think there's there's some fertile ground there for for uh, perhaps I don't know someone like Ditloff, Jordan Ditloff, getting into the Senate or something like that. Especially somewhere like like here in in Victoria, where One Nation is viewed a little bit more um, a little bit more harshly than further up north. Yeah, my understanding, I don't think One Nation has that much traction as far as like uh, ground level stuff in um in victoria i think and i don't know if this is current but i think the last federal election people were talking about like within the the, the realm of campaigning that one nation was around this solid sort of two percent in victoria uh the, that they that were really in, kind of entrenched they they were in but they were struggling they they wouldn't really rise or fall around that two percent so they, they had this kind of entrenched two percent of the population who were just going to vote one nation because they liked pauline hansen um, and that wasn't really going to change. And, and so I don't know if that's still current, but, uh, that's, that's the most recent information that I had when I was in uh, a little bit more involved in that world. So, I, and 2% is not enough to get a Senate ticket, but 2% is enough to get preferences that are, that are important to get the fifth spot, which last time, you know, was the, the showdown between the Libertarian Party's David Limbrick and Ralph Babbitt from the UAP, who is the current Senator who got in, um, He's been kind of quiet lately. I haven't heard from Babbitt in a while. Not that that's, that's a bad a, that, thing. That, but... Yes, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know he got a, he got a letter from Trump because he, he kept talking well about Trump and Trump sent him yeah. a letter to say, thanks, Babbitt, for supporting me across the world. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, that's it. Uh, that's, that's the main things I wanted to talk about. Again, sort of lull, lull yeah. period, I'm sure. Hopefully some stuff erupts in the next couple of weeks. But even if it doesn't, I mean, there's definitely stuff on the horizon. 
and uh, and I can't wait for that. And I'm sure, uh, I'm, sh I'm sure the U.S. election is going to start heating up real soon. And uh, we were talking about before the show the fact that the U.S. the U.S. election seems to divide people here in Australia uh, even more than an actual Australian election does because it's so much more. Um, I don't know, grandiose and, and in your face and all over the news. And uh, people almost know more about that and are more divided by that than they are about the Australian stuff. So uh, that'll be fun. That'll be heaps of fun. Having, uh, you mentioned you had a punch up in a pub over, I oh, know that was over something else. That, that yeah, that was over was something else. Like. Yeah, that was, <laughs> it's way back when. Uh, so yeah, no, anyway. no, I think yeah, I think I think we'll I think there'll be some some real interesting collectivitis episodes uh, coming out and and seeing what's what's going on, uh, and yeah, I think in Australia it'd be very very interesting. Collectivitis, as Pauline Hanson continues to yeah. call us, much yeah. to our anger and uh, and chagrin. Um, all right. Well, if you don't already, you can follow us on uh, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and Twitter. We are now on Apple Podcasts. This is that's new. Mm -hmm. I, I worked out how to sign up to that. Uh, <laughs> the, the the tech savviest show around. We yeah, are. You know, there's some other platforms you should learn to sign up on as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, so anyway, Apple Podcasts. What a place. Go there. Listen to us. Give us a review. Give us a like. No, oh, fuck Apple Podcast. Sorry, I know this is going to get get shadow banned now. I've said that. No, to go on um, go on, go on an open source platform. <laughs> sure, but I don't even think we're on an open source platform. Oh damn! Anyway. Well, we can, let's um, get on an open source platform. All right, all right. Uh, for the anally retentive tech tech guys out there, we'll get on an open source platform. For the all cool right. kids. <laughs> yeah, really cool. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> All right, we will catch you next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, see you soon. Peace.